Hello and welcome to this week's Hi-Fi review. And for this review, well, we have an all-in-one system, a single box that does just about everything. All you really need to do is add a pair of speakers and you're up and running. So what is it? Well, this is the Omnia, the Audio Lab Omnia, and it is priced at $1,500 and 99 pounds. Now at this point, most reviews, I would guess, would dive straight into the features, what it sounds like, is it good or bad, and Bob Durante. Well, not this one, because I want to just pause just for a second, so bear with me. And I want to ask the question, why would you want to buy an all-in-one? Who buys all-in-ones? What are they good for? Why would you even want to purchase one? Why is buying an all-in-one preferable to buying a suite of separates? Well, let's quickly address that particular point, and then we'll talk about the Omnia. Now, this is a good point to say that if you want to navigate around this video and you want to skip bits or highlight certain parts of the video, look down below in the description. There are chapter headings to enable you to do that very thing. But let's talk about all the ones briefly, but let's talk about them. So why buy one? That is, why buy an all-in-one? After all, aren't separates supposed to sound better? Well, in broad terms, yes. Yes, they are. But there are good reasons to grab an all-in-one hi-fi system. Firstly, well, price. This Audio Lab box gives you a CD player, a feature that you don't always see fitter than one of these all-in-ones, especially these days. You also get a streamer for internet services. There is a Bluetooth module in there, which can sometimes be a separate thing within Hi-Fi products. A headphone amplifier is in there. You get a phono amplifier, which supports moving magnet only. There is a power amplifier, so you can hook your speakers directly into the rear. And again, not every all-in-one allows you to do that. You can plug in your hard disk as a music source. You can plug in a simple USB stick into the rear. You can add an external CD transport, and you can add a digital audio player to it and play your music from there. Now, if you bought that lot as a suite of separate products, you would be spending more, I would hazard a guess, than the 1.6K for even half decent separates. So those features I have listed, all of those features can, with the Omnia, be accessed via a single box. All of these features have been set up, so you don't have to buy extra cabling. Each feature has been installed, so you only have to press the power switch on the front of the Omnia, and you're ready to go. And because all of these features are packed and squeezed into a single box, you don't have to worry about large shelving units or having your hi-fi sprawled or dominating your living room or your listening room or wherever you happen to want the Omnia to live. You can hook a pair of speakers to this box and you can have a fully functional hi-fi system ready to roll in seconds. Now, as for the sound quality this thing produces, well, that's why we are gathered here today to witness the joining of two lives, you and the Audio Lab Omnia. The question is, do you take this all-in-one to be your lawfully wedded hi-fi system? Well, let's get to know the bride, or in fact groom, shall we? And let's take a closer look. A 
and welcome to the Closer Look section for the Audio Lab Omnia All in One System. And in general aesthetic terms, well, sitting at 440 millimeters by 156 by 327 millimeters and weighing in at around 9.1 kilograms, the Omnia looks meaty yet remains rather stylish with its corner curves and relatively minimalistic front fascia. The far left shows the telltale metal slice of the CD tray, which unlike the company's 6000 CDT, offers a tray-like transport instead of that unit's grab and pull system. Now I know many people will prefer the Omnia's tray-bound transport to the grab and pull system, so a plus point for them. Over on the right, there are five tiny buttons that cover the CD transport controls, your source button, and volume, and they work fine, as long as you take note of what you are doing. Half-hearted and rather lazy button presses are not enough, and I have to say I'm guilty of that on occasion. These button presses need to be firm. Personally, I like chunky buttons that prioritize function over form. An interface is there, in my opinion, to allow you to communicate with the product. It's not there just to look good. This layout with its tiny buttons is perfectly fine, and it does work, but it is a slave to the design. You might disagree, of course, but look. If Audiolab can give me a large front-mounted power button, then why couldn't they... well, never mind. Dominating the front fascia and catching the eye is a rather nice 4.3-inch colour screen that displays system settings, format data, and track information. There are menu settings buried in the screen interface that will allow you to change the output so you can change the basic functionality of the Omnia, from an integrated amplifier to a preamp, or you can use the Omnia as a power amp in an AV system. Staying on the system menu options, the screen's brightness can be changed, display time out, volume limits, standby delay, and there are language options as well. There are no tone controls, but there is a balance feature. To display the signal output in a pictorial manner, there's the option to display analog or digital VU meters, and I will put those in air quotes actually. I saw both of these options as, how can I describe them? Unnecessary toys, I would say. If you're going to do a job, then either do it well and give me the real thing, or don't do it at all. I felt like the guy who was shown a picture of the Mona Lisa on an iPad and then is expected to drool a Ritz Masterpiece-like qualities. It doesn't quite wash. The VU options were poor doppelgangers of the real thing. So after being faced with faux VU meters, I made my setting choices, then permanently switched off the screen in a slightly grumpy manner. But back to the meat of the system, and the DAC, which is based on a Sabre ES9038Q2M chipset. In spec terms, the DAC supports 32-bit 768kHz, plus DSD to 22.5MHz, or DSD512. The Omnia also delivers full decoding of MQA if you need it. This means that the complete three-unfold decoding process is performed internally. In power terms, the Omnia can push out 50 watts into 8 ohms via a Class AB power unit. Now, think about that just for a moment. Most all-in-one systems I know use Class D because it runs cool, and it's a sensible choice. Now, Class D amplifiers can sound Excellent, and I've reviewed, well, I've reviewed a few myself that perform wonderfully. Class D has come a long way and does not, at least these days, deserve all of those negative comments I keep seeing on the internet. Even so, some lower cost units that are often shoved into an all in one chassis because of that cool running performance and low price, well, they can struggle to offer a, I don't know, what would you call this, 
an engaging personality, shall we say. The Omnia, of course, does not depend on Class D. It opts for a B, which you will find on many high-flying separates out there, as well as one of my favorites, the 6000A integrated amplifier. In fact, the amplifier section on the Omnia has been based upon that classic Audiolab 6000A. But apparently the designer of that and the Omnia, a gentleman by the name of Jan Ertner, has tweaked the amplifier section of the Omnia, so it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. I will take a listen and I'll report back in a moment. Oh, and I must add that I do like the design efforts to maintain isolation inside the chassis to keep that noise floor as low as possible. Now, when I'm testing amplifiers, I do like to hook them up to my Quad 57 electrostatics. And well, they don't suffer amplifier fools gladly, but the Omnia performed well with these classic speakers. They never strained or lacked in power terms. To connect to the internet services, I downloaded the PlayFi app, which works well with the Omnia. And that is, of course, available from the usual app stores. Now, I have heard of a few odd bugs from this app in recent times, but there have been some software upgrades of late. And I must say that the app performed very well during these tests. And I never had any problems during the review. And before we move on, take note of the headphone socket on the bottom right of the front fascia. I'm happy to see a 6.3 millimeter socket here and not the usual three and a half millimeter option. The 6.3 millimeter option allows me more freedom to use high quality headphone designs without compromising performance with an adapter. And yes, I can hear the difference when I use a three and a half millimeter adapter in a 6.3 millimeter socket. After all, why give the output signal yet another hurdle to jump? Let's look at the back now and twiddling the chassis around. We see it's, well, stuffed with sockets and much more. More like the three Wi-Fi aerials reaching skyward. And on the far left, the rocker power switch that sits right above the IEC power socket. To the right of those are speaker terminals and gliding further to the right, Past the trigger sockets is an Ethernet socket for wired internet performance. To the left of this Ethernet socket is a service only USB port, and on the right is another USB socket, and that can be used to insert USB sticks or hard disks. Carrying on to the right, and you'll see a bank of three optical and three coax ports one atop the other. Now our progress stops at another bank of ports, one pairing to allow the Omnia to act as a preamp for a power amp box, a power input plus four input pairings, which is a good choice for most users out there, I would say. Anyone who has a 6000A amplifier or 6000 CDT transport will recognize the included remote control which is exactly the same. So how does all of that sound then? Well, let's find out and check out these sound quality tests. Welcome back to the Audiolab Omnia All-in-One System. Now, this is a feature-packed box, so there's a lot to investigate. With that in mind, I picked up my Astel & Kern Can Alpha digital audio player and plugged that into the rear of the Omnia via the optical port. And I listened to the title track from the Doves album, The Universal Want, at 24-bit. 96k, which offered a strong lead vocal, distinctive piano, percussion, isolated bass guitar, some acoustic guitar, and lead electric guitars, with a rocking beat that only appeared later in the track as a bit of contrast. Now, I've heard some all in one hi fi systems that 
seriously want to impress you. They're desperate to impress you, and they're full of hi-fi hormones. They can sound strong and meaty and almost visceral at times because they want to thrash your ears into submission. It can sound impressive, but also wearing over a long period of listening. The Omnia takes not one, but I would say two steps back from that particular sonic position. If you want an all-in-one that puts you in the center of the action, puts you in amongst the musicians and the music itself, and wants you to take place on the actual stage, if all of that is what you seek, then I would probably recommend you pass on the Audio Lab Omnia. What the Omnia wants to do here is to entertain. It says to you, you sit there in your chair and let me give you a performance. So the sound stage from the Omnia is just that. There's you, there's a space, and then there's the Audio Lab box doing its thing. The upshot is a more, a more relaxing delivery, one that provides, well, I wouldn't say a recessed bass performance by any means, but a bass output that's happy to sit in the mix. It doesn't push a hand in your face and say, take that. The Omnia is an all-in-one that utilizes each sound frequency. It's part of a team, I would say. And like any good team, no one frequency dominates. In fact, moving to the mid-range, I was impressed by the overall focus across that soundstage. This allowed you to clearly hear a bit of vocal texture here, a slight straining sound on the larynx there, and the piano, which sat in a sort of airy space, which added atmosphere and a bit of a naturalistic presentation. But that stereo effect majored on focus. Now, I would not say that the soundstage stretched far left and far right. Instead, the Omnia seems to want to gather in the sound and pay careful attention to it. So while the stereo effect is by no means narrow, it's still pretty wide, what the Omnia wants to do is handle the sonics with a, a sense of care instead of doing the let's have a party, let's all hang out kind of option. The impact, well, that is still there, don't get me wrong. The detail remains, but there's enough balance to allow all areas of the music to have their say. And the noise floor, well, yep, that is kept very low, and it allows the ear to pick up on subtle information. Now, I moved to a USB stick inserted at the rear, and I played a CD rip of Carol Kidd's a nightingale sang in Berkeley Square. This is a jazz vocal with a quartet behind the vocal. And I was happy to hear a nicely balanced performance. The treble infused cymbals offered a spacious feedback while each cymbal tap sat on a sat on a bed of air, really. As a nice contrast to that, the upright bass that provided weight and a sense of gravitas, and that gave the whole song a really good foundation. Contrasting that was the acoustic guitar, and there was a rather complex acoustic guitar solo during the middle eight of this song. And that worked well, you could really hear the definition of the detail throughout. Underpinning all of this was an inherent discipline across the entire sonic spectrum. What do I mean by discipline? Well, no part of the sound envelope behaved badly. There were no tizzy treble sounds. The mid-range never sounded pinched. The bass never boomed. To my mind, that's the starting point for any hi-fi component. Get the basics right there, and you can build from that point on. Next up, I wanted to test the built-in CD drive, so I grabbed a copy of New Order's Republic and played the track Respect. At least that's what I was intending to do, but the Omnia was having none of it. It seems that the transport can be a little bit sensitive. Now, one reason why I use this particular disc is that it's a bit battered, it's a little bit scratched, and it's a very useful disc to test the robustness of any one particular CD transport. The Omnia, in this particular case, didn't want to know. So I took the disc out of the Omnia and I put it in the 
6000 CDT transport, also by Audio Lab. And that worked first time. So I took it, the disc that is, I took the disc out of the CDT, I put it back in the Omnia, and once more, the Omnia didn't want to know. Now, I then tried a whole host of CDs after that. I must have, well, must have tested about 20 in all, and all of the other discs were fine. So I can only surmise that if a particular disc is a bit battered, is a bit scuffed, and may work in some CD players, you may have trouble with the Omnia. I am sure that all of your discs in your collection are pristine and shiny silver and well cared for, so that won't be a problem. But I just thought I would let you know. Now, I did try, as I say, a whole host of other CDs and I had a good listen to them, everyone from Genesis to Gong to Nick Drake to The Fall and so on. And I was very impressed. I was impressed with the general overall balance to the sound. That reminded me of the qualities of the 6000A amplifier in terms of its very good tonal balance. That is, no one frequency dominated the rest. I was also impressed by the overall focus from the Omnia playing CD. Now, while the CD drive in the Omnia didn't quite have the same dynamic reach as a specialist item like the CDT transport, but that's expected. That's a specialist piece of kit. It does one job. The Omnia does a thousand and one jobs, of course. But given those restrictions, the CD player in the Omnia performed remarkably well. I then tried Bluetooth and I used my Astel and Kern Can Alpha in Bluetooth mode. I pushed that earlier Doves track, The Universal Once. This is the title track from the album, and I used Bluetooth's aptX HD. Now, being a compressed stream, even using this rather nice codec, there was still that trademark, rather steely reflection from the mid-range, but that's, that's a Bluetooth thing. There certainly wasn't the same rich depth and mid-range insight as heard via, for example, the optical connection. Nevertheless, the Omnia translated the stream signal very well, offering a structured sound with plenty of power and weight around the bass regions, with a nimble and detailed suite of upper frequencies. Bluetooth was certainly listenable via the Omnia. I then moved to Networked Play, and I downloaded the PlayFi app, which was downloaded and configured using screen prompts in just a few minutes. I then looked into Amazon Music, and I played Kate Bush's Running Up That Hill in wired mode, which was noticeably superior to wireless play. Wireless play sounded a little edgy and just slightly clinical in the mid-range. Wired play offered much more confidence, while the delivery had none of that tension heard during Bluetooth streaming. Actually, if you note the differences I'm giving you here, that in itself is a good thing in terms of where we are in technology terms. What I mean is the Omnia never tries to mask any sonic deficiencies or differences or changes. It never imposes itself. It never brings any of its own color to the sound, which some products do. Some products I've reviewed do that, and they coat the sound with their own personality. The Omnia, on the other hand, deals in truths. It gives you the facts. It gives it to you straight. And if a source is not particularly amazing, the Omnia is neutral and balanced enough to relay that information to your ears. Increase the quality of the source, and the Omnia has the balance, but also the capacity to cope with that and to tell you about it. Now, as this was a network stream, it was very nice, it was very good, but it wasn't perfect. I personally feel that network streaming has got quite a way to go before it hits the heights. I'm sure it will. It's got plenty of time to do that, but it's not quite there just yet. And the Omnia tells you that. The Omnia informs you about what's going on. For me, I see that very authority in source terms as a good thing. Even so, in wired mode, network play was perfectly listenable. I then accessed internet radio, and I listened to a station called Prog Frog. This was pushed out at 16-bit 
44.1, and I was impressed by the quality of this radio station. There were no severe issues in terms of frequency discipline. In fact, the soundstage sounded large and expansive. Yes, there did seem to be some internet sourced signal compression, which added a little sibilance to the vocals now and again, but the Omnia was happy to describe all of this to me. Even so, listening to internet radio, I thoroughly enjoyed the experience. It was at this point that I plugged in a pair of Sennheiser HD 800s into the front mounted port. And again, I was happy to hear that the headphone output largely mirrored that of the speakers. Now, sometimes internally mounted headphone amps can offer a completely different listening experience. It can be completely divorced from the, the product it's in. It's almost as if the headphone amp is from a completely different manufacturer to the box it's sitting in, but not here. So the sonic experience, the sound from the headphones matched, in broad terms, the sound from the speakers. Again, I approve. I gave the built-in phono amplifier a pretty quick test, and it's decent. Not amazing in terms of mid-range insight or dynamic reach, but it's good enough to get you going, and it's ideal if you spent all your cash on the Omnia and you've got nothing left, and you want to spin a few vinyl discs. So how do I sum up the review of the Audiolab Omnia all-in-one? Well, let's end with a few final thoughts, shall we? Then I will look at a few pros and cons, and then we'll rustle up a rating. Now, all-in-one hi-fi products can be sort of Swiss army knife affairs, and the Omnia is certainly that. But on steroids, just about any input and output you can think of is stuffed into this single chassis, which means that it's jam-packed full of features and value for money. As I've stated before in other reviews in the past, these days of steadily rising costs, Value for money is a critical part of the buying decision. The Audiolab Omnia passes that test with flying colours. In sound terms too, I've got no complaints. Now, does the Omnia outperform a suite of specialist separates? A separate amplifier, a separate CD player, a separate streamer and the like? Well, no. No, it doesn't. But then... It's not supposed to. That's not why you buy an all-in-one. You buy an all-in-one for the wealth of features it offers. You buy it for the small footprint because there's no cabling involved, because there's no installation involved for these separate features. They're all connected and ready to go. After that lot, you're looking for a good quality sonic response. The Audio Lab gives you all of those things and more. So let's look at a few ratings. In the good column, well, I love the feature set. There is a wealth of options from the Omnia. Any popular input and output, it's all there. Ease of use, yes, I found the Omnia very easy to use indeed, whether you're using the front fascia or the PlayFi app. I had no issues. In terms of sound quality, I was very happy with this. It has that tonal balance, it has that neutrality, and it gives you the honest truth in terms of what your sound is doing at any particular moment. Also, it gives you great value for money, and in these days, value for money is critical. In terms of the bad column, well, to be absolutely honest with you, there's nothing really of note, nothing I would flag as a major concern, which is why I'm happy to give the Audiolab Omnia an 8 out of 10, which means it gets an award, a groovy award. For the price, the Omnia is a bargain. Congratulations to Audiolab. And that's me done, folks. Thank you very much for staying to the end of this video. And if I could ask you to click on the like and subscribe buttons below, it would help to support this channel and it would keep this channel moving swiftly through the YouTube algorithm. If you want to dip downstairs into the description, as I said before, you can 
navigate throughout this video with the live chapter headings. There are other links to my Facebook group, my website, and also my Patreon page. And I would encourage you, if you can, to support this channel via Patreon. It helps to fund what I do. You'd be surprised how little I get from YouTube in terms of funding. It's Patreon that keeps this channel going. I will be back with another Masterworks, I think, on Friday for Fun Tune Fridays. And I hope to see you then. Good to have your company. Until that time, folks. Bye-bye for now.